3.7 is optimization problems. So we have some guidelines here for solving applied minimum and maximum problems. It says first identify all given quantities and all quantities to be determined. If possible, make a sketch. Two, write a primary equation for the quantity that is to be maximized or minimized. Three, reduce the primary equation to having a single independent variable. This may involve the use of a secondary equation. Determine the feasible domain of the primary equation. For instance, problems that deal with time, there's no such thing as negative time. So all your negative solutions would be omitted as a feasible answer. Um, number five, determine the desired maximum or minimum value. So here's example one. It says find the length and width of a rectangle that has the given area and a minimum perimeter. The area would be 128 square feet. So it does say find a minimum perimeter. So it's my perimeter equation that I want to maximize or minimize. Remember that is one of the key things that I need to do, part two, is to minimize to write down my primary equation, okay? However, I may need to use a secondary equation to put this in one variable only, okay? That second equation is the area. So I know that the area is length times width, but I also know that that's 128 square feet. So if I could take this equation and solve for one of the letters, I can substitute it in here and therefore create an equation a primary equation which is one variable. Now it doesn't matter which one you choose um, because the answers are respective of each other. So if you choose L, you'll find L and then later go back and find width. If you choose to get width by itself, we'll have a function here in terms of width, which means you'll find width at the end and then you'll use that to go back and find length. So it makes no difference which letter you choose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna divide both sides by L and I get that W equals 128 over L. So I will use this later, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in. So instead of W in my primary equation, I'm gonna write 128 over L, since that's what W is equal to. Then if I reduce this, I end up with 2L plus, um, what is that, 2, 56, let me see, 128 times 2, yes, 256 over L. Another way of writing that is 2L plus 256L to the negative 1. Okay, so now, since I want to minimize this, I need to take the derivative of this function. So the derivative of P with respect to time, um, is going to be, or no, I'm sorry, not with respect to time, with respect to L. So the derivative P with respect to L is going to be 2 plus 256 times negative 1 L to the negative 2, which means I get 2 plus, or not even plus, minus 256 over L squared. If I try to get a common denominator, I will have 2L squared minus 256 over L squared. Now, if I get the critical numbers from this, I can set my numerator equal to zero. Oh good, I do have paper over here. So my numerator equal to zero and my denominator equal to zero should give me my critical numbers, okay? So here I will add 256 to both sides. I will divide by two on both sides and I will take the square root on both sides. And let's see what is the square root of 128. We get about 11.3 and most times they will ask you to round um, if not, you may have to break this up into its exact answer. So 128 divided by 4, divided by 4, divided by 4. Okay, so 128 divided by 64. Okay, gotcha. So this is 2 times 64 
and although there is no square root of 2, the square root of 64 is 8. So I get two answers here, L equal to 8 square root of 2 and L equal to negative 8 square root of 2. Here, if I square root both sides, I get L equal to 0. Now, going back to our feasible answers, I could set up the number line and test to see which one's a minimum, but two of these are not feasible. If my length is zero, then that means that I just have a line. I don't necessarily have a rectangle or any kind of square shape at all. So this is not a feasible answer. And length cannot be negative either. So this is not a feasible answer. The only feasible answer I have is L equal to eight square root of two. But if L is equal to eight square root of two, the width, if you recall, is 128 over L which means 128 over 8 square root of 2, or 16 over square root of 2. You cannot use this as an answer. You do have to rationalize your denominator. So then you end up with your w equal to 8 square root of 2 as well. So what ends up happening is you end up with a square, actually, instead of a rectangle. These are feasible answers. So your length does equal your width, which equals 8 squared to 2. Now, if your computer asks you to round your answer to so many decimal places, then you can just plug it in and say it's approximately 11.314, right? Um, and I think it was in feet because, yes, they told us square feet. So then each individual me measurement would be in feet. So just be cautious of whether they want the exact answer or whether they're asking you for a rounded answer.